Starting the day with your customised alarm. Falling asleep listening to Calm. Routes to work on Google Maps. Group chats on WhatsApp. Podcasters, bloggers, influencers, vloggers. The one thing you must do to live longer. Buzzfeed headlines, climate deadlines, searching Google for answers, binge watching TikTok dancers, tear gas placating the masses, organic food packaged in plastic, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the 10 year challenge, two essential steps to achieving a life of balance, $30,000 sneakers, robot teachers, Kim Kardashian's maternity dress, three vital habits that guarantee success. Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, Generation Alpha, 4G, 5G, 6G, AI, VR, 360, drive through pharmacies, pills to help you sleep, pills to keep you awake, pills to stop the side effects of the pills you take, same day delivery, targeted ad epiphanies, flaunt your wealth, pouting for a selfie, four important ways to getting more healthy, the political left, the Political right, polar bears standing on melting ice. Alexa, what's the meaning of life? Fast fiber, driverless cars, holes in the ozone, colonizing Mars, posting pictures of your best day ever on Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, Meta, five quick cheats to make your life better, deep fake, fake news, January blues, cancel culture, guilty until proved, Netflix, Prime, YouTube TV, HBO, crunchy rolls, sunsets via live stream, Black Friday panic, space junk all in the planet, rising prices, hospitals in crisis, six tips to help you become more decisive, seven techniques that guarantee rest, an ever-growing sense of hopelessness, eight proven methods to help you worry less, where do I fit in all of this, nine secrets for reducing stress, I search for my soul in this modern wilderness, ten top tips to have the best year yet, to make happiness increase, to find the life you seek trying to buy my peace, trying to find myself, trying to be like everyone else, doing everything this world expects of me. I'm liked, I'm followed, I'm viral, I'm trending, life unending in this kingdom of plenty. So why do I feel so empty? How could we possibly feel empty. After all, we've been doing and doing and doing. We've been trying and trying. We've been following and liking. We've been reaching out for, for that carrot, right? That, that, that if we could just do a little more, go a little further, then everything would be better. If we could just reach that reward, that, that good thing. Five more payments, four more years, three more sessions, then. Then you'll have it all. Then just a few more, and, and then you'll be able to grab hold of what it is you really want. But the carrot keeps moving. Maybe when you find a, a better girlfriend or another partner. And maybe when you finally get married. Or after the wedding, for sure. Well, once we have kids, or once the kids are older, or once the kids graduate, or once the kids are done college, once the kids get married, then, well, then it'll be different with the grandkids. The carrot keeps moving. It will be better next time, we're told. When my spouse finally starts helping, when he starts picking up, when she stops saying, when when my parents change, when my kids finally stop, but, but still the carrot, it keeps moving. It's just beyond our reach. When all this happens then... But, but the carrot always seems to, to move just a little further. When my next pay raise comes, 
If I could just get that promotion, if the stock market would just bounce back, if, if that settlement would finally come through, when I have a little more money, then everything will be better. But the carrot, the carrot keeps moving and shifting and changing. The, the, the carrot is just beyond reach, whatever the carrot seems to, to be. When I lose some weight, when I hear back from the doctor, when the grocery stores stop selling cookies, when the medication finally kicks in, then, well, then everything will be better. But again, the carrot keeps moving after the renovation project. But I guess we'll still need more. We'll need different. We'll need newer. We'll need bigger. We'll need better. We'll need bolder patterns or not so bold because the carrot keeps moving. For many of us, the pursuit of happiness has actually replaced happiness, contentment, and real peace. It seems like most of us either throw in the towel and give up in one extreme, or we keep pressing on and pushing and reaching and reaching and reaching for that reward, that gift, that gimmick, that, that carrot, so long and so hard that it's not good. And we lose sight of what happiness, contentment, and real peace even is. We buy the lie of the marketers, right? We think if only, but then we get the if only and, and it keeps moving. Welcome to Chasing Carrots. I'm Kevin Matthews, the lead pastor here at The Point Church, and thank you for being with us today. Uh, a special shout out to our Bathurst congregation. Uh, it has been a long time, baby, since I've gotten to be with you folks in Bathurst. All summer long, we had uh, Pastor Roy and Beth McGregor, and now you folks have the illustrious... Uh, the wonderful uh, Pastor Brent and Tara Steves, and so we're so thankful. Uh, I've been hearing incredible things about what's going on in Bathurst, and this message today isn't by accident or by mistake. This is for the folks here in Miramichi, but it's also for you in Bathurst. I also want to do a little special shout out to the ladies over at the Women's Correctional Facility in Miramichi, and then an increasing number of little micro sites that are popping up in homes where some people that aren't able to be with us are gathering together and, and joining and, uh, and they're part of our, our congregation as well. And so I want to thank you for being with us, every one of you. And, and I believe today that none of you, whether you're here live and in person or, or online with us at one of our sites, I believe God's got something for every one of us, and, and it's not just another moving carrot. You're not here by accident or by mistake. You're here because God's got you here at this moment on purpose and by his purpose. Maybe because some of us have been pretty distracted from the most important things. And today, Today, not, not someday, but God's got something for you to grab hold of, take hold of, that, that you want and need, whether you even realize it or not. God's got something for you better than just chasing another carrot. Now, my dog, Max, um, he is a cute dog, um, but he is bad. 
Uh, He is very disobedient. He is incredibly smart. So the reason I know he's bad, some people say there are no bad dogs. No, he is bad. I believe it with everything in me because he knows when he's misbehaving, right? Like, because I can, I can tell him to do anything. Come, come on, Max, come. He's not interested. But if I hold up a piece of carrot for that dog, a piece of, of carrot, a, a treat, a, a reward, man, the dog can solve murders. He can count. He can do just about anything. If I've got some sort of a reward in my hand, including carrots, that dog can do just about anything. But no carrot, no obedience. Carrot, he's a genius. Many of us are not that different than my dog, if we're honest, right? If there is a good result... At the end of our obedience, we can do just about anything for a little while. But no reward, uh, no attention. Many of us need to do something different. We're so busy chasing the next carrot, right? But, but we're not just racing toward the next reward, Our minds, even, are racing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And by 24 hours, I mean all 24 hours. How's your sleeping been lately? Right? Sometimes the, the sleeping, even, can be pretty tough because our minds are racing. Even subconsciously, we're chasing carrots. We're going after the next reward. We're losing sleep. We're burning the candle at at both ends, right? And it's our runaway thoughts. Those runaway thoughts that end up leading us to fear. And what's the buzzword these days? Anxiety. Because we've so, because we've been so busy chasing carrots and carrots that keep moving were exhausted and our minds keep racing. But, but there is peace. There are still waters, calm streams. There's calmness even in the chaos of life. And Believe it or not, it's not out of reach. It's yours for the taking. And this peace, this real contentment, this happiness that lasts doesn't have to be some other time. You you can take hold of that today. Uh, And you can take hold of a peace that makes no sense. If you knew what I had going on in my life, you would understand why I don't have any peace, people would say. But but you can have peace even when you shouldn't have peace. You can have real contentment and lasting happiness. They're yours to grab hold of and, and embrace to enjoy. But most of us unwittingly have replaced peace, contentment, and happiness with this pursuit of happiness. And really, I think the words that come to my mind is wishes, wants, and worries. Our wish and our wishes start to make us think um, I, I, you know, casually, I, I wish for this, I wish for that, I, I wish... And if we're not careful, those simple, innocent, good wishes start to occupy more and more of our space in our our brain and our our thinking. And and before long, they're no longer a simple wish, but it's what I want. I, I, I really, really want this. In fact, we sometimes confuse our wants with with needs and our wishes and our wants if we're not careful and if we give them too much space, that's not to say we shouldn't wish or shouldn't want, 
But, but if we give our wishes and our wants too much space, they turn into worry because what if that doesn't happen? What, what if I don't get that? What, what if it does? And our, our worry can often um, just be our minds preoccupied with things going wrong rather than things going right. It starts off so innocently, I wish for something good. I I, I want something good, Uh, but it it hasn't happened yet. It's not happening. And what if something bad happens? I mean, just look at the views on YouTube, look at the news, our our worries get more clicks. And so we fill our minds with the worries. What is going to happen on the world scene? What what is the news reporting? What, What catastrophe is going on? Oh, not just out there, but, but right in my home. What, what, what about with my teenager? What, what about with my spouse? What, and worry awfully easily t- takes over. But, but listen, worry doesn't work. We know that intellectually, but emotionally, there, there's a disconnect. There, there, is, there is such a long distance between our, our head and our heart, right? Right? And there is this disconnect that happens. We know that worry doesn't change a thing, that worry doesn't help a thing. And if you think it does, oh, you're really messed up. Because worry doesn't help. Worry doesn't work. The scriptures are, are quite clear. And so if worry doesn't work, and if there's nothing wrong with a few wishes and wants, How on earth are we ever going to stop those things, those good, innocent things, from turning into worry? Keep in mind, if you feed anything, even a bunny rabbit, it gets bigger, right? If you feed anything, it, it gets bigger, and worry is the same. If we feed it, worry will grow. And so, what are you feeding your worry these days with? Think about that. What what are you feeding your worry with these days? It's awful easy for our thoughts to get out of control, right? Our minds to to go wild with with worry and, and fret. You ever get a headache? And you think, I wonder what's really wrong? Like, why, why am I getting these, these headaches? I hope it's not a tumor. I, I mean, I hope this isn't something really serious. Why, why, you know, a tumor would mean that I might die. And, and if I die, my kids are going to be left all alone. And if my kids are left all alone, oh my goodness, my, my spouse, they're not going to be able to handle this. How are the, is my spouse going to get the kids off to school? How, how are they going to, and, and you know what, if we're not careful, one little headache turns into something crazy. Uh, how do I know? Because I do it too. Yeah, maybe it wasn't over the headache and the tumor. Or maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but for some of you, it's not. <laughs> But, but we take one little worry and we think about it and we let it grow and, and grow and, and grow. And listen to me, if wishes turn to wants and wants eventually can turn to worry, let, let me assure you, let me promise you that worry turns to stress and stress turns to anxiety. And every bit of it starts in the mind. It it starts with our thinking. 
scriptures teach us, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Don't just follow everything the world says, that the news says, that the wisdom literature of the world says. Don't just follow the patterns of this world, but be transformed, be changed, be be transformed by how? The renewing of your mind. Change your mind and you change your world. To change your mind and you change your worries. Change your worries and you change your world. You can almost say it's impossible, I believe, to live a, a positive, peaceful, content, happy life when you have a negative mind filled with worry, right? And, and it can be a real problem, this, this box of worries that we uh, carry around with us. Whenever we fill our minds with, oh, what if, and oh my, I hope that doesn't, and, and whatever we fill our minds with, that gets bigger, right? Bigger and bigger, and eventually those worries uh, start to lead us, they start to actually direct us, that they start to rule over us. And so what do we do with a big old box of, of worries and, and negative thoughts? What can we possibly do? Well, as Christians, we were taught to take those worries and give them to God, right? We were taught to to empty out the worry box and and, and give those things to God, to, to put them in the God box, to turn them over to God. And so we look to scriptures and Philippians Chapter 4 gives us some great advice of of how to empty out the worries and give those things to to God. It says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I ain't got nothing to rejoice about. I'm worried. Man, it's hard to rejoice and worry at the same time. If you want to chase after something to rejoice about, man, it... It starts to shrink the the worries. Rejoice in the Lord always. Find something good in this situation. Find the silver lining. Find something good. I'll say it again, the Apostle Paul says, because some of you don't believe it. Rejoice. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. God's close. Do not be anxious about anything. That's tough. Well, why would he say that when, when the apostle Paul would know full well that we're all anxious about everything? And he says, don't be anxious about anything. And then he gives us a recipe of how to turn some of these big old worries over to God. Do not be anxious about anything, but instead, in every situation, if you're worried about something, don't just keep obsessing and stewing over it. Pray and petition God. Oh, God, look after my teenager. Help my my relationship. Be with my spouse. Keep them safe on the road. Help me to figure out a way to to make more money in less month. But by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, thank you, God, that you are answering my prayer. Thank you, God, that you are blessing me. Thank you, God, that, that you are doing what I'm asking you to do. Thank you, God, for your goodness and present your requests to God. See, rather than obsessing, rather than worrying... Rather than giving all the space in our heads to worry, we need to learn how to empty that box and give it to God. Because then the peace of God, 
Not the peace of this world. Not, not the peace of a calm lake. Not, not the peace that you just bought on that app. But, but the peace of God, which makes no sense which transcends all understanding, the peace of God, which is more than we can understand, then it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, if you want that peace of God, don't miss this. If you want that peace that God gives that, that peace that passes all understanding, that contentment that, that is real, that happiness that lasts, then whatever is true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And as you do this, as you compare your thinking with what the Apostle Paul tells you to be thinking about, as you transcend, as you transform your thinking, as you start thinking instead of what's coming up on, the, on Netflix or on the next channel or, or the website you want to visit, instead, if you'll Think about what God wants you to think about. The God of peace will be with you. Amen. We ought to push our wishes and wants and worries. We, we ought to push them, pull them, lift them. We, we ought to put them in the God box. But... but Inevitably, eventually, if you're anything like me, we take it back, right? We, we can even write it on a piece of paper or whatever, and we, we put it in the, the box. God, I pray that, that this works out, that he doesn't do that, that, that she doesn't say this. And then we, we put it in there, we, we pray it over there, we give it to God, and then we reach right back in. And we start saying, so, so God, like, like it's been five, ten minutes now, and I haven't, the phone has not rung, no one has texted me, the, the bank has not called and said all my, my debts are forgiven, what, what is going on here? Um, I, I'm going to have to take this back, and, and we take it back, and we, we, we try to give God a recipe for how to fix this. You know, I've had people in my office who have said, I, I don't even know how to pray about this. I don't know what to tell God to fix. I, I don't know how to tell God to fix this. Can you help me? Let's let God figure it out. Let, let's let God figure out how to fix whatever it is. See, the real problem is our God boxes are too small. Our God boxes are, are too small, and, and what we really need is smaller worry boxes and, and a much bigger God box. Because God can handle what it is you think he can't handle. See, your worries are not really too big for God, but your God box might be too small. You might think that God is smaller than he is and everything starts, everything rises, everything falls, everything moves, everything changes around our thinking. But, but today you can have a bigger God and smaller worries if you'll do just a couple of things with me. First of all, get your own God box. Yeah. Get your own God box. You don't have to make it fancy. Uh, Karen White, my assistant, uh, she uh, made fancy God boxes for, for me. You don't need a fancy one, but in the back of your closet, in an old shoe box or even in an old shoe, get yourself a, a God box. And when you catch yourself worrying, wishing, wanting, whatever it might be, go ahead, write that out. 
and actually physically put that in your God box and then do one more thing. Next time you start thinking about it, obsessing about it, feeling anxious about it and worried about it, go climb into the back of your closet, find it, pull it back out and admit to what you're doing. You're taking that back from God. And that, that physical, symbolic act will help you to remember, I got to give this to God. I, I got to surrender this to God. I, I got I to gotta let go and let God handle this. Maybe while you're putting it in the God box, you'll pray a little prayer or whisper. Ask God to, to take this, but then, but then leave it there. If and when you find yourself thinking about it, admit to what it is you're doing. And then the, the next thing, the, the second thing that we ought to do is instead of just giving our worries to God, we need to actually give our minds to God. Well, how on earth do we do that? We watch what we're watching. We read what we're reading. We look at what we're looking at. We, we figure out, man, what are we putting into our heads? Now, I could give you a legalistic list of things to do and not do and, and, and all that kind of stuff, but I don't have to because the Holy Spirit will. You know that there are things that you are putting in your head, that you are putting in your mind that you should not be putting in there. You, you know that there are things you are enjoying that are not very enjoyable. They're not praiseworthy or excellent. They're not right. They're not noble. They're not, they're not the, the list. And so the challenge is, if you truly want to change the size of your God box, if you truly want to surrender your worries and let go of your anxiety, you got to change your thinking. And the way to change our thinking is to truly give our minds to God. And in Colossians chapter 3, we're told to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Hidden with Christ in God. Well, I haven't died, Kevin. That's the problem. And that's the problem. We have to die to ourselves. We have to die to our wishes, our wants, and our worries so that we can have it so much better than what we can understand. We've got to change so here's what I want you to understand. The God box is actually science. It's kind of practical. A psychologist or a counselor might label the box differently, but they would probably tell you, yeah, go ahead, write out your, your worries and then put it here and do this with it or that with it. Those are, are, are exercises that can be beneficial and, and helpful. But, but some of them would have to stop there because they're in a secular profession. I don't have to stop. I can tell you about the supernatural part of this. See, there's more to it than, than simply getting a God box and, and writing out some, some worries and giving them to a box or a shoe or, or anything like that. There's, there's even more to it than giving your mind to God we got to grab hold of something that God is holding out to us. It's a supernatural thing from the living God for the children of God. If you want to know why your worries are, are so big, it might be because of what you're feeding them. But, but there is nothing better to feed your mind with today than what God has for you to take hold of. And so let me help you right now. Bow your head, close your eyes, 
and imagine something with me in these closing moments. Imagine with your eyes closed, imagine with your head bowed, calm waters. You're looking out over a a lake. Imagine peaceful streams, the quiet night sky. Maybe imagine the, the stars on a quiet night or maybe that beautiful mountain view that you've enjoyed before. Now imagine the God who created all those things. Imagine in your mind's eye the God who wants the best for you. Imagine a bigger God, a bigger God box. Start shrinking that worry box for me. In the pages of scripture, we see all sorts of places where God gave visuals to Abraham, gave visuals to to his people. He wanted them to picture this so that they could fully understand it. And so would you go ahead and picture your worries getting smaller and smaller? Picture God having more and more of your life. And when worry breaks in, when, when the wishes and the wants of this world try to distract you, when the carrots start appearing, identify the lie of our culture. Admit that the carrots of this world will never really satisfy. They'll keep moving. You know, if you can figure out the lie you've been believing about if you only had more, if you only had bigger, if you only had better, if you only had different, well, then you'd finally be happy. That's not true. But you can replace that lie with the truth of God that the things of this world are never going to make you happy. It's only God that truly satisfies that happiness lasts into eternity even. It's only God who gives you real peace. Whatever you've been told or whatever you've told yourself, this is all I need for happiness. You know what? That's exactly what the enemy can use against you. Find your peace, your contentment, your happiness in God, and you'll have something that no one can take from you. Lord Jesus, we bow before you. Lord Jesus, we bow in your presence and we ask you to save us from the emptiness, from the moving carrots. Save us from our own thoughts, God, and save us from our sin. God, forgive us from for doing life our way instead of of your way, oh Lord. The, The world says we need more, we need different, we need bigger, we need better, but oh God, you say that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. God, you say greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. God, you say nothing is impossible for you, oh God. Your word says that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Your word says the joy of the Lord is my strength. With long life you will satisfy me. The fear of the Lord adds length to life. It's not the economy, it's you, O Lord, who gives me the ability to get wealth. It's you who causes me to prosper. Today I replace my wishes. Today I replace my wants and my worries with you, O God. You are my great physician. You are my mighty counselor. You are my provider, protector, the one who causes me to prosper. And so today I silence the enemy, the negative, the culture, the wrong thoughts, the worries. And today I stand boldly beside my God, my King, my Lord, and my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.